We're going to travel down the highway a little first to, to, to a place called Winchelsea. And we've got Christy Piker and Paul Price, two very knowledgeable people from the world of the Geelong and District Football League. There's been some rumblings down around the Winchelsea Blues Footy Club and Christy and Paul talk about the current situation and their views on what could be the future here on Geelong Newspeak. Yeah, we wanted to have a bit of a chat today uh, with you about Winchelsea because they're in a little bit of a bit of strife, uh, both sort of on and off the field and, and looking forward at the direction that the club perhaps needs to go and perhaps, um, you know, what things have been not done correctly that perhaps need to be addressed. Um, but uh, firstly, uh, just wanted to touch base on the fact that uh, Matty Wallen, who's uh, probably the best player for Winch out there running around uh, at the moment, this is going to be his last game uh, today, which is obviously very unfortunate for a club that is struggling. Um, but uh, obviously Matty's been around the uh, the club for a long time now and uh, it'll be sad to see him go. He has. He's one of our junior products that, you know, it's probably alludes to what I'm going to say later sort of that has actually stuck around and there's been football for him and hasn't had to move on to higher leagues he did go and have a go at uh, South Bowen for one year um, and then just due to his work commitments and schooling uh, he actually came back we were fortunate but now uh, that he's finished that schooling it's time for him to take a job in Western Australia and uh, off he goes on Wednesday. What uh, what kind of impact is that going to have uh, both on the field and off the field for the Winchester, uh, yeah. Winchester Footy Club? Look, it'll be very demoralising for them he is the captain of the club he as we say he's a junior that has come through so he's, he's known by everyone sort of locally and uh, those around the place and you know over the last couple of years he probably has been uh you know one of the more standout players so it's certainly going to leave a hole in i suppose it's say a talentless side at the moment and uh you know it's it's going to be hard for him to cover or hard for them to cover now, uh, obviously, things haven't been all that great on field for the last couple of years. Is there anything, any any particular catalyst or anything that you can put that down to, or has it just been sheer bad luck? Yeah, look, I just think it, it's hard out here where, uh, you know, the geography of it is 30 minutes out from Geelong and, you know, kilometres away. It's We don't have a junior program out here. We have, I suppose, good Auskick, good under-10s, under-12s, under-14s, but there's no under-16 and under-18 side, and there hasn't been for a few years. Uh, Going back to my first year, 2003, we had an under-18 side play in two finals at St Albans. Uh, you know, and then since that, we, uh, we've struggled for numbers. And when you haven't got six or eight kids coming through each year um, you know, to fill your reserves and you know, maybe get one or two senior players out of them, you, you're out there trying to recruit senior footballers, you're trying to recruit reserves footballers. And unfortunately, you, you don't get those kids that actually come through together and have a feeling for one another. It's sort of everything's imported, everything comes from outside. And, you know, 2005 was probably a perfect example where I brought 48 players into the club uh, and they were very talented side, but they just didn't get on. Yep. Uh, you know, we, were, we had probably more talent than most sides going around, but I just couldn't get the local content to mix with the outside content. And, you know, at the end of the year, all the players went. And same with this year, you know, 38 clearances once uh, I finished, clearing, finished coaching and now uh, they have to rebuild again. And without a junior coming through. You have a look, I suppose, Carayo is a perfect example. I think all bar one or two of their senior and reserve sides have come through the junior system where we don't get that out here. It's important, isn't it? So so what's the answer then? I mean, we, without any thirds, should it be, should the pressure be put back on, on the parents from the kids? Because there are obviously are still, you know, young kids who are out ar around this area and in the town. Should the, press, should the pressure or I guess the um, uh, the emphasis be put, put back on their parents to perhaps say, well, look, you know, play your kids local, let them stay here as opposed to going in into Geelong or is there something that the, the club needs to do? Do they need to be really proactive in even door knocking and going around and saying right we want we want your youngsters to come and play for us? Yeah look the club just need to work harder and I think that's the problem uh, with the club. They seem to think oh we've worked hard, um, you know unfortunately we can't get it up and running so that's good enough where instead of going well we've worked hard it hasn't worked let's just work harder um, and then we'll get something going. You know Colac and District play under 17 footy so maybe if you went up and you said well look your kids that aren't ready to come out of under 17 footy and go to reserves and seniors, how would you like to come down and play a year in our under 18s and try and be proactive that way instead of just waving a white flag and saying look it's just too hard uh, last week was an example, Lockie Hill uh, played his first senior game with Invalid he's a kid that played to the under 14s here but then because we've got no under 16s, 18s he's, he's gone over to there go. uh, and, and you can't and blame. And that's the thing I guess if you get to that age as well, once you get to that sort of you know, 14, 15 year olds, you kind of want to play with your mates and stuff so if all your yeah. mates are obviously going to be somewhere, they're going to continue on then, they're footy that's, with them aren't yeah. they, they're not going to come back to 
winch went to play senior footy. That's why I've probably never seen Bannockburn bottom right out. They haven't had to sit at the bottom of a ladder for a couple of years. They've got good junior programs. And the thing that we've found here, especially with kids, and I, I can talk now because I'm not a coach. As a coach, I tried to push them along, which was probably the wrong thing to do. Whereas we don't tend to let kids be kids enough play them in their age group what's wrong with a kid who's 15 or 16 playing an under 16 competition and dominating it learning what it's like to get 35 kicks a game let him play that let him go to the under 18s play his couple of years there sure take him up for a week or two of senior footy give him a taste of it but then put him back what we found out here i was getting kids that were 15 and 16 again look you're better than what i've got on the senior side look you're just gonna have to come up and play senior footy for us and it sends kids backwards and you know once you go, go back to bannockburn they've they've allowed their kids to play in under 16s and under 18 footy and they've gone on and won premierships in those under 16s under 18s so they know what it means to to play winning football they know what it means to play in finals they know what it means to play in grand finals they know what it means to play in big games so and when also they go, play for each other as well which yeah is, they come which through together and when thing. they come into senior football and play in a big game they're not overawed like some of the kids that you know play in a losing culture here um, and you get into a game like today where you know it's i suppose blue west are favorites but you know if winchelsea are ever going to win a game today's probably it yep. the kids won't know how to respond they'll, yep. they'll be overawed by the occasion and i think that'll be the detriment of winchelsea yep so so well, what has the club done wrong then in in that case i mean why aren't they out there you know pushing for these for these young kids to to, to remain at the club part of the problem is i think <laughs> is it not enough volunteers there's the not club? enough like, workers around the club and those that have stepped up have stepped up and they've done what their father's done and they've done what their father's father's done and just because something's done for a hundred years doesn't mean it's right yep. now practice doesn't make perfect perfect practice makes perfect so there's no point just going oh we tried but you said that last year you're trying but you're trying the wrong things start to start to work a little bit think harder start to look outside the square and you know it's it's probably been the same thing with the town it's close enough has always been good enough and you know they always happy with a you know an honorable loss and all that sort of stuff and it's pretty hard to change a philosophy like that where uh you know i don't know the basis behind moving from the Colacan district to the Geelongan district but i just don't think that they were professional enough or ready to work hard enough to actually come into a semi-professional league like this. Knowledgeable people, Christy Piker and Paul Price, very open with their views.